2021 was another great year for Mega Drive games development, bringing us brand new commercial titles such as Demons of Asterberg, as well as great new ROM hacks such as the recently released Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition. For this video I'm going to take you through all of the games that are currently in development for 2022, or at least I should say all of the games that I am personally aware of. And as you're about to see, there are a number of very impressive projects currently in development, spanning genres from racing games to RPGs to puzzle games to platformers. There are remakes of 8-bit titles, demakes of 32-bit titles, fan-made games based on established series, and also brand new IPs. Now the word I really want to emphasize here is in development. Many of the games in this list are fan-made games done as a hobby in people's free time as they work around other commitments they may have such as to work and family and so on. So it shouldn't be too surprising if many of the projects you see here today don't get finished until maybe 2023 or 2024 and maybe even some of them unfortunately will be abandoned altogether. For those of you who have been following the Mega Drive home development scene for a while and have witnessed a year after year of these new games being developed and are wondering where are the Mega CD games then stick around to the end of the video because I'd have a, an explanation for you because there's a very good reason why there are not so many Mega CD games being developed and I'll also be describing a possible way that everyone can help improve that situation. Before talking about other people's projects for 2022 I should probably say a few words about my own two projects. For those who don't know, I'm currently developing two different Mega Drive games. The first is a 16-bit remake of the first Game Gear Shinobi game, and the second is a, a reimagining of Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the Mega Drive. It's going to be more of a classic, uh, traditional 16-bit action Castlevania game. 2021 was the first year that I really seriously tried to learn how to program and how to develop games. And I think that 2022, the first half of this year, will be still spent a lot of time uh, learning new things and learning how to program, improving my programming skills and my game development skills. But I hope that in the second half, I'll really be able to pick up the pace for both the games and really start um, pumping out the levels for the games. But that's more of a hope rather than a plan, because who knows what's going to be going on in the world uh, at that point. Since I myself am currently in the process of porting what was a classic PlayStation game to the Mega Drive, let's kick things off with another demake of the 32-bit game, Resident Evil. Although making Symphony of the Night for the Mega Drive brings its own challenges, I think that bringing a 3D game such as Resident Evil to the Mega Drive is a, a much more difficult proposition. For Symphony of the Night, at least we can keep the game basically the same, just uh, make some adjustments to take into account uh, VRAM and color and sound and and CPU limitations but for Resident Evil being a, a fully 3D game obviously they need to make many more changes and they've gone for an isometric style which I think works really well. I know there are some people who are not great fans of isometric games but um, for games which don't require any platforming I think it works fine. So for games such as, I think it was Landstalker where you had to do some jumping, sometimes it's really hard to see uh, where the platforms were to judge your height and to judge where you were in relation to other things. But for a, a game like Resident Evil, a more slow moving game, even the 32-bit version was pretty slow moving, I think the isometric viewpoint will work very, very well. I remember hearing somewhere that the developers tried to contact Capcom to try and get this done officially. Um, I think they were unsuccessful in that attempt unfortunately, it's, that's something to be honest I've never even thought about doing with uh, Symphony of the Night and Konami but I suppose Capcom might be a bit more open to it than Konami would be. At least Capcom have been good enough not to issue any kind of cease and desist orders so it'll be able to continue as a fan made game but for this type of game I think it also has potential to be its own thing if the developers eventually just decide to maybe introduce new characters, change the setting, uh, change the story, it become its own unique IP as I think uh, isometric survival horror IP will go really well with the Mega Drive. Resident Evil. The same developers, PSCD, have also been making a puzzle game. 
They have a demo of the game available which I will link in the video description. In fact for all of these projects you'll find a link in the video description. It might be to a, to a demo or maybe to a video or maybe to their website. As well as having a voice title screen they also have this rather impressive opening scene which is also fully voiced. From the few minutes I spent playing the demo it seems to be a lot of fun, it's very smooth, it plays very well, I think the graphics are very nice for a puzzle game too. Um, you can probably tell from my gameplay here that I'm still getting used to the rules and seeing what exactly you're supposed to do in this. I think you'll have to take the time just to maybe read the instruction manual a little bit to find out what you're supposed to do but I thought I was maybe getting the hang of it by the end of it here. In one of their recent updates of the game they introduced this character art which is very impressive so they really seem to be going all out in terms of presentation. A project that I'm sure many people are already familiar with is ZPF. I think that many of us were really blown away when we first saw this in 2020, not only because of the really superb scrolling effects but also the excellent use of colour. Although 2021 has been a bit of a quiet year in terms of updates, they do seem to be still working on the project so hopefully we will get some good news in 2022 and maybe even a Kickstarter announcement. I still don't know how the developers are planning to, to do this, Kickstarter seems the obvious choice but I hope we hear something from this game anyway. Another impressive shoot 'em up which did go to a Kickstarter earlier last year was Irena Genesis Metal Fury. This one was due to come out in December 2021 so that was last month but the developers have decided to work on it a little bit more. It seems like they're putting a lot of effort into the playability of the game and redoing bosses and AI so hopefully it will end up a great game when it comes out in 2022. I think the stage 2 in particular is looking very impressive with its great use of colour and its beautiful scrolling cloud effects too. While we're on the topic of side scrolling shoot em ups I've been following this very promising project from AAR. As you can probably tell Last Defence is in a much earlier stage of development than the previous two shoot em ups we've seen but it's already looking very good I think. Since it doesn't have any music yet I've taken the liberty to add this Mushi music to the background which is very suitable because as you're about to see now it has a kind of a, a Mushi style opening cutscene where your comrades get knocked out by some unseen enemy. And now we have a little taste of a boss battle and I'm very impressed with the scrolling effect on the planet here. I think it really gives off a kind of uh, a, the glow of the planet in space and I think it looks really nice. In addition to having three shoot em ups in development we also have three one on one fighters being made too. In the previous screen you may have seen that Lawrence McCormick is doing the music for this one and you may know him better as Inglebart who is also doing the music for my Castlevania game. It's sounding great as you would expect and it looks like the programmers have made really good progress on getting the uh, different moves in, different animation and even putting in hitboxes and so on. I think for any kind of fighting game the AI is going to be very tricky to code in just to make it fair and not frustrating and uh, so that's a very tricky business but it's looking really great so far so I have high hopes for this one. There was always a big rivalry between Capcom and SNK fighters back in the day so it seems somewhat fitting that as well as having a Capcom fighting game we also have an SNK fighting game being developed. This one's already looking very nice with uh, great animation 
and uh, very nice backgrounds too with animations in the background you can see the exhaust from the cars uh, going off and uh, excuse my bad gameplay I've never been particularly good at fighting games and actually this is my first ever time playing King of Fighters 98 so I can't really pull off any moves I'm not sure if because they haven't been programmed into the game yet but it's probably my lack of skills I'm trying these uh, Street Fighter combinations but it's not quite working from that little splash screen at the very beginning it seems like there are a lot of talented people involved in this project so I have high hopes for this one too they will turn out great the third fighting game we'll be looking at is a game with a very 90s attitude and a very 90s title too insane pain after Donkey Kong Country burst onto the scene in 1994 lots of companies really went crazy for this type of uh, pre-rendered 3D sprites but I don't think we've seen any in any uh, homebrew or indie Mega Drive games before so it's great to see one now I don't know about anyone else, but after all that insane pain, I was really in the mood to take a look at a very cutesy traditional platformer game. Rocket Panda from Space Pants Games fits the build perfectly and is a really nice, almost like a flicky style game. According to the creator, this is almost finished and should be out in February or March. And as with all of these projects today, please check the video description for details on where to play. Another game which is pretty much finished now and will be releasing early next year is Metal Dragon. From what I've seen and played so far, this is a really fun game. The gameplay is a bit like Mercs, it's an overhead run and gun and there's a lot of uh, good humor in this it really parodies these kind of 80s 90s action games and action movies so i think this is a one to really look forward to Speaking of run and gun games, we are fortunate enough to have not one but two versions of Metal Slug in development. This first game by MST is actually a port of uh, the Atari STE version that he did himself. So he's taking that computer version and porting it to the Mega Drive. And this second game by Studio Vetia called Metal Slug Warfare is actually rather than a straight port is more of a survival points game from what i can tell from my playthrough you basically run back and forward and you have a constant stream of enemies coming down and hostages to save and the enemies seem to get more and more as you go on and i guess eventually once you get up to a certain amount of points you go on to the next level As if two versions of Metal Slug weren't enough, we also have more classic run and gun gaming with Mega Man the sequel was. As I understand it, this game is a series of remakes of the NES Mega Man games, the 4th, the 5th and the 6th games and it's looking really good right now. They released a demo of this just in December so I will include a link to that and encourage you to play it for yourself. I was particularly interested in this first level of the game because it has some nice rain effects and I'm going to need to put some rain effects into my GG Shinobi game and I think they look really great here. Uh, Mega Man, I, I think after playing this demo I really understand what people meant by NES hard as you've got a constant stream of enemies coming at you, you constantly have to move so I'm not very good at it right now and you have in this particular level you have the wind blowing you back so um, it's quite difficult to make those jumps but it's a really great game, really impressive music, graphics and gameplay so far so I encourage everyone one to take a look at the link in the video description. As if all those classic run and gun games weren't spoiling us enough already, 
we also have this new improved version of Sunset Heroes. Now Sunset Heroes did get a Mega Drive port back in the day, but unfortunately it was on a very small cart size. I think it was Konami's first game for the system, so they're very conservative. Maybe they didn't, didn't want to risk a very expensive cartridge. And uh, you can see here that the original Mega Drive version in the bottom right corner, it was very dark, especially compared to what Pyron has done with the new Mega Drive version in the top right, which I think right now is looking even better than the Super Nintendo version even. Well, I say that Sunset Heroes is a run and gun game, it's probably deserved to put into its own special genre, along with the likes of Shinobi and Rolling Thunder. It kind of has a special type of game bay to it where you can jump up to the higher parts of the level and jump down again, which is different from your regular jump. And I really, really love these games. I love the original arcade Shinobi, I love Rolling Thunder, and I love uh, Sunset Heroes too. As I understand it, this game is on hold at the moment, um, but they've got a very talented team behind it, so I am hopeful that at some point in 2022 they'll be able to continue work on this game, but even what they've done so far is already fantastic. And now for a change of pace as we take a look at what looks to be a more of an RPG type adventure game, Elenka. Programming this type of game can't be easy, but the programmer, uh, McFaldemar, looks like he's done a great job. There's some nice little lighting effects there. Seems like you can examine lots of different things. You have a big inventory system and so on. You can pick up things and it's looking very nice. I especially like this sailing cutscene. It reminds me a lot of Dynamite Heady. Next up we have two games from Matthias Bias. The first of these games is a type of dungeon crawler called Crypt of Dracula. Despite the warning saying this is just a work in progress prototype, I already really love the cutscenes and the just the graphics and the art style in general. I think it looks very polished, very professional, very very nice indeed. The gameplay, the animations, the scrolling are all looking very smooth and very nice so I really look forward to playing this one in the future. Not content with developing just one game, Matt also has a second game on the go, a Snatcher-like graphical adventure. As somebody who played Snatcher for the very first time just this December, this is a game that's very interesting to me, although it seems to have gone for a more modern day setting rather than a kind of future um, cyberpunk setting. So I don't think we'll be seeing any gunfights, but if we are, I really want to ask Matt to please include the Menacer supports and not just the Konami Justifier. Thanks. Speaking of the Menacer light gun, Greg Gullardo has been in the early stages for creating a Menacer light gun game. The Menacer didn't really get a lot of support from Sega during its lifetime. I just remember the packing game with five separate mini games, including the Toad Jaminor one and the one where you had to shoot the bugs that are trying to eat your pizza. And apart from that, the only other game I remember is the Terminator 2 arcade game port, which was fun, but there wasn't really a lot of games, so I'm really excited for anyone who wants to create new games for the Menacer. Greg has also been working on this Super Scalar racing game. The Mega Drive doesn't have any scaling hardware, so all scaling effects need to be done on the CPU. As I understand it, Greg here, for lots of the roadside scenery, has used different frames of animation just to emulate the effects of the um, the trees and the billboards so on getting bigger as they as they approach the camera and I think it's a, an effect that works very well. Anyone who watched my recent video where I played various different builds of my games on CRT TV in real hardware may remember me mentioning that I was working on a Yakuza karaoke game for the Mega Drive. So I was very interested to see this game from Sir Macho, which is like a 
a rhythm game just like the Yakuza karaoke mini games but with various different Mega Drive music. It's looking pretty good so far. As well as Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition and various other projects, Master Lin Kuei and team have also been doing Splatterhouse. I really hope they continue with this project in 2022. We've already got uh, Splatterhouse 2 and 3 on the Mega Drive and it will be great to get the first one so that we have the full trilogy. It would be interesting to see how close they can get this one to the arcade and also how it would compare to the PC Engine version. Although the PC Engine was an 8-bit system, it still has some advantages over the Mega Drive such as the um, increased colour palette and maybe a couple of other things and it will be good to see how they compare. And just like with Street Fighter Zero, the music for this one is being done by Inglebud. Before we go on to talk about the Mega CD, let's take a look at our final Mega Drive game for today. Actually, in its own way, Arcade's Escape is a Mega CD game as well as a Mega Drive game. Although this game runs fine on a regular Mega Drive, if you happen to have a Mega CD attached, then you can utilise the second CPU in the Mega CD to make the game run faster. This is especially useful for a 3D game such as this, which the Mega Drive wasn't really designed to run. And I think it goes without saying that this requires some mad coding skills on behalf of the developer, SICK, to make this possible. Going back to the question posed at the very beginning of the video as to why there are so many Mega Drive games being developed at the moment but very few Mega CD games, the answer can be summed up in four letters, SGDK. SGDK stands for the Sega Genesis Development Kit and most of the games you've seen here today have been developed using SGDK. What makes SGDK so useful for Mega Drive developers is the fact that rather than having to learn lots of uh, assembly code and having to look at old manuals to try to learn how to do basic things such as scrolling and and uh, toll scrolling, parallax scrolling and putting a sprite on the screen and so on, it creates a, uh, a unified, very simple to use development environment where you can do all the things you want to do. You can put sprites on the screen, move them, animate them, do some parallax scrolling in a much more user-friendly way, which doesn't require so much time to learn. In a few weeks from now, I will be starting my own series of SGDK tutorials so everyone can learn how to make Mega Drive games for themselves. And you will see as you're taking those tutorials that although just like any other serious hobby such as learning to play the piano or guitar, it still requires a lot of time and effort. It's really not so difficult to do some impressive things on the system using the SGDK environment. It's certainly a much easier process than if you had to go the traditional way of uh, coding everything in assembly and reading the manuals and so on. The man behind SGDK is a French gentleman by the name of Stéphane and for anyone interested in the whole Mega Drive home development scene, whether as uh, active participants or whether you just like to see the games that people are producing, then I'd really encourage you to go to his Patreon and if possible to give him some support. That is a really great way to indirectly support people such as myself and many of the others featured in today's video just to help us produce more Mega Drive games in the future. Uh, SGDK is being improved all the time, it's being constantly updated and the more features we have for that the better the games we can produce and the more we can push the hardware. Unfortunately there is no Mega CD functionality in SGDK at the moment and that is the major reason why we're not seeing many Mega CD games. To create Mega CD functionality will require a huge effort, but Stefan has indicated that if his patron gets to a thousand euros a month, then Mega CD functionality would be on the table. Now, right now we're at about 300 a month, so we're not too far off that target. So again, if anyone has the means to do so and the desire to do so, I'd recommend you go over to his patron and give whatever support you can. And if Stefan does make his 1000 euro a month target and does go ahead and create some Mega CD functionality in SGDK, then I'll be more than happy to create a Mega CD version of Symphony of the Night, as many people have asked me to do. 
right now to be required to learn all this assembly code and all these look at these old mega cd manuals probably badly translated it's just it's just too much effort i think it will take too much time and distract from other things i could be doing but i'll be more than happy to do so if we have a, an sgdk type mega cd environment to develop the game in it would be really great to try to utilize the mega cd's hardware to try and create some of the effects that you're seeing on your screen right now that's it for this video. I think 2022 is looking to be a very exciting year for Mega Drive game development. Apologies if I missed any projects today. There is so much going on in the whole Mega Drive development scene that it's hard to keep track of everything that is going on. But feel free to leave a, a, a link or a, some details of any projects in the comments and I'll be very happy to take a look. I look forward to bringing many updates throughout the year on both the GG Shinobi project and also my Symphony of the Night project as well as the upcoming tutorial series. I really hope that more people get involved in Mega Drive development. The more people we have with the skills to develop Mega Drive games, the more great games we're going to get and I think it's a very, a very fun and fulfilling hobby. And who knows, maybe you're featuring next year's video. If any of the games featured today pique your interest, please check the video description for links to each project, and I will see you next time. Farewell.